Ah, Michel Coron. Okay. See, uh, today I am going to talk about non-linear Okay. See, uh, earlier we have spoken about linear equation of motion. There were linear hydrodynamic derivatives, and we talked about the stability of the vessel without controls working. Okay. All of these were like, were like studying very similar to initial stability or small angle you know hydrostatic stability that when theta is very small you know the condition is something like metacentric height more than 0. But the point is that today I want to talk about little more general form of equation of motion there is a reason for that. See uh, we have quantities like this linear quantities right. Then of course, we have radar quantities. These were the linear hull derivatives. These are linear radar derivatives. Okay. Of course, in which we of course said all the divisions that this is linear velocity v, this is added mass, etc., etc. We have discussed it many times. What we found out at the beginning, we found out that the stability criteria depends on these quantities. That is one. Secondly, we spoke about a turning circle zigzag and some definitive maneuvers. And of course, when we did turning circle maneuver also, we talked about only the turning circle predicted based on linear derivatives. So, obviously, as a consequence of this, now my next job is how do I find out these derivatives? Because I need to find it out. Now, when I am doing a design, I need to find out how much they are. When we want to find it out, most experiments will at the same time also find out what is known as non-linear derivatives. Now the question is what is non-linear derivatives? Okay. So when you do an experiment you always end up doing all together. This is why I thought that first I will speak about non-linear equation of motion one class before I go to how to determine the derivatives. That is the purpose okay, of my uh, this talk. Why non-linear derivatives? Remember that earlier what we did, we were thinking the ship was going on a straight line. Okay. What we did? We wanted to find out if I give a small part duration, very small, does it go on a this thing or does it go on a straight line? So, it was against initial small part duration. Okay. That was one. But when we did simulation of zigzag etcetera, though we had turning circle we had zigzag maneuver. In there, of course, we did not talk of derivatives. We only talked about actual experiment. But you know, when you do turning circle at 35 degree radar, the turn rate may not be small. And if the turn rate may not be small, then the very assumption based on which I made this equation of motion may not be valid. So, I may require a non-linear equation of motion, large amplitude, just like if you want to study what is my healing moment at 30 degree, you cannot use G m, you use Z z. The similar way, you may not be able to use only linear equation. So, what is the concept of nonlinear equation? That is what I want to talk today. And this comes in because nonlinearity may be involved when I make large trajectory simulation, that is when I make sharper turns, when I make very quick zigzag, etcetera force may not be linear. 
So, this is what we will today discuss. Now, you see here, what was our equation of motion? It looked like, I just look at y and n. My equation of motion looked like m u dot minus r v, no sorry, this is not, I will just write it again, m, because we will write only the y equation. I will just write this too and then we will see. This was my equation of motion. Remember, just from the basic Newton's equation of motion, mass into acceleration is force. What we did, remember, now earlier we had only this as half force, this is half force. But if I have the radar, I also should have radar force, radar force, uh, sorry, n. Then what we did, we said this half force, y h, because we say that I am only looking at very small values, I ended up getting this y h as y v v plus y v dot v dot plus y r r plus y r dot r because y h was taken to be a function of r and v. Okay. Since it was function of r and v, what we said is that we said by Taylor expansion, it is like that up to linear order. Now, let us take this case. Let us say y h against v. What we did? We, we said like this that I have here v, I have here y. I have this varying something. I am only looking at value at a small value v compared to this which is 0. So, I said y at v equal to y at 0 plus v into dy by dv plus v square by 2 d square y by dv. The Taylor expansion is like that, right? etcetera. This is the Taylor expansion. Well, what I did? I only took up to this much. Okay. Which means I said this is a straight line. And of course, this was 0. So, it becomes this v dy by dv. But now, Remember, suppose v is no longer 0 and let us say this graph is not this way, the graph is actually stooping down. I have my v here. If I only use this, I will end up getting this estimate. So, what I need is to use higher order derivatives. Now, if I were to use up to this much, I will have found out v dy by dv plus v square by 2 d square y by dv square. Okay. If I took up to this much, it will be 1 6. Now, this is one way of looking at that. But I can also say by a curve fit, I can also say that y versus v is a 0 plus a 1 v plus a 2 v square plus a 3 v cube, etcetera. I can fit a polynomial on this graph. Of course, this is 0 because I know that at v 0, y is 0. So, what happened? If I compare this with this, what do I find out? I find out a 1 is essentially dy by dv. A 2 is essentially half of d square y by dv square. A 3 is 1 by 6 of d cube y by dv cube. Okay. Now, comes the so I will just rewrite this again in, in this one. That means, I find out that A 1 is equivalent to dy by dv. A 2 is equivalent to half d square y by d v square a 3 is 1 by 6 d cube y by d v cube etcetera. So, I if I if I were to call this y by d y by d v as y v then this is like y v. If I if I, if I was to call d square y by d v square as y v v then it is 1 by 2 y v v and this is 1 by 6 y v v v. 
Okay. So, what in this nomenclature what happened? My y v has become a 1 v plus a 2 v square plus a 3 v cube plus which is equal to y v v plus half y v v v square plus 1 by 6 y v v v v cube plus. So, that you can see that therefore, a 2 is supposed to be half y v v a 1 is etcetera. Okay. This is a coefficient I can call this derivative, but what happened it is a question of nomenclature I can also write now this is very important for us as a convention I can write this to be as if I will write this as y v v plus y v v v square plus say I will call this with the bar. So, that my y bar v v v is basically d cube y by d v cube into 1 by 6. The question is that this thing c are just the coefficient they are just basically a coefficient a 1 a 2 a 3. The nomenclature in maneuvering is that the term by which you multiply say v cube you always write this coefficient as y with a suffix v v v or v cube that is the nomenclature used. So, what happened when I represent y as this way that is when my y was not linear but this way then I end up getting an expression like this. Okay. So, what we are saying effectively is that I am making an assumption in this y that they are going to be a force against some parameter and therefore, they can have a non-linear variation up to this much, non-linear variation that is up to this much. See what I am trying to do is that I want to find out y against v and I am saying that yes, this is not a straight line. You know the analogy is theta versus g z, this is like that. This straight line is what g m theta. Okay. So, if I were to make a straight line I would have called dg what I could have called d g z by d theta into theta plus this part is nothing but g m. But if I want here I need this I do not need this if I were to use g m theta I would have ended up getting this as z z. So, the analogy is exactly same because at larger value of the force there is there can be possible nonlinear variation it may actually be like this I need to use higher order coefficients. So, it effectively comes to the fact that I have here once again a motion it can be v v dot r r dot whatever here I can have y n whatever and this can be arbitrary like that. So, therefore, I will have to express this because what I am looking for is that given my v v dot r r dot what is my the y value that is what I am looking at. So, for that essentially supposing y is a function of v and r also v dot and r dot let us see. So, what happen it I will have here a multiple parameter I can say it is v dot v dot plus y v dot v dot v dot square plus etcetera then y r dot r dot plus y r dot r dot etcetera plus I will have v dot r dot v dot r dot plus y v dot v dot r dot maybe v dot v dot r dot etcetera. There is no end I can have infinite number of coefficients as a general expression. Now, what I showed here is a added mass that is only with respect to this two then I have to have with respect to this two and the combination also. So, generally I can have a very large expression. So, if, if I were to go in a general sense then I will have a uh, let us take an example of just well uh, in, in here also remember that this part variation of y against acceleration is added masses variation of y against this is damping forces. Okay. Now, it so happens that obviously in a general sense we can have infinite number of terms but shall we have it is there any physics behind it that is the first question that comes in. Now, it turns out that from potential flow theory if you use exact theory you know 
See added masses that is this arise or can be determined from potential flow. And there is this part has been very well uh, you know like uh, studied general expressions for fluid forces on an accelerating body is known. This is basically a part of marine hydrodynamics course. Okay. So, we will not derive that obviously because it is a long expression, uh, uh, but the expression comes out to be something I just want to write this so that you know if j becomes u i dot mu j i it is This is mu m i, something like that. Uh, Mj is there is a similar expression. This is j. Mm, this is okay. This is l. This is l. This is actually I, I do not expect you to remember of this, but I just want to show you just for knowing this. J k l l k. L i. See here I tell you we need not really too much worry about that, but there are some general expression known. J is 1, 2, 3, direction 1, 2, 3, m 1, 2, 3 means moment in 1, 2, 3 is a general expression. Okay. Mu j i is basically are called added masses say mu 1 1 mu 1 2 etcetera etcetera. U i 1 2 3 are the linear velocities alpha k 1 2 3 that is k is 1 2 3 are essentially the rotational velocities which is also equal to u uh, 3 4 5, uh, 5, 5 basically u 4 5 6 is alpha 1 2 3 is equal to rotational velocities. Epsilon uh, j k l is known as Einstein's, um, uh, it is a, it's a convention. If j k l are in a cyclic order that is 1, 2, 3 or 2, you know 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, then this is supposed to be 1 plus 1 or for anything else it becomes 0. And if it is anticyclic that is 1, 3, 2, etcetera, then it becomes minus 1. So, this is a general expression that has been derived by the hydrodynamicist to find out added masses. Why I am saying that? Because you will find out here actually from this the general expression for an accelerating body is added masses. For example, suppose there is no acceleration, body is going on steady translation, then this becomes 0, alpha k also becomes 0, then you will be able to find out that f j becomes 0. This is the classical d Alembert paradox. Okay. If on the other hand there is an acceleration, you will find out that there will be some uh, value. For example, in our case, we have, let us say, we want to find out f2 okay, as a function of certain parameters. If you place all of them, you will be able to find out exactly what happened. f2 is my y force, you know, 1, 2, 3, f2 y force. And if I were to say that I have no acceleration, only velocity, then this goes to 0, etcetera, etcetera. So, you can find it out. The, my purpose of saying is that having done this, one would find out that 
the exact expression for added masses that is the, the velocities dependent on u dot v dot etcetera known fully known. You will be finding out that f 2 will become v dot into mu 2 2, mu 2 2 is my y v dot minus mu 2 2 that is the by definition. So, these expressions are known why I am saying is because the fact that I write here this one I do not have to make a general expression for this variation against the acceleration. Variation again acceleration is well defined, well known, one does not need to model it, it is known from theory. So, as far as the variation of y or n against the acceleration is concerned, earlier what I did I took it this as y v dot v dot plus y r dot r dot, I took it, but here I am trying to show that I should take some nonlinear terms, but I do not need to do that because this expression are well defined in um, literature. So, the acceleration forces or if I were to go back to this uh, hull force part here, if I were to define this again y h as y h due to acceleration or inertia that is for v dot and r dot plus y h due to uh, damping that is v and r the first part the inertial part is well known for that I do not have to take an arbitrary expansion that is the point I am trying to tell. Okay. The debate that comes the entire debate that comes in modeling actually arises purely because of its damping term that y against v and r. How do you model them? Okay. Now, now I will come to this part how do I model them y, y against v to r. So, what happened that there can be number of models there, okay, let us see this, this, this part here, y against v, this is where the debate comes, see y against v dot acceleration forces are well known and I will write this expression afterwards what happens to the acceleration part eventually. Okay, well, right now let us not uh, you know like look at that, you will find out that there will be some extra term coming uh, when we do this expansion of y force. But uh, in fact, I can show this from here. What would happen, you know, that if you look at this this term, just just, just for one sec, let us look at this first term. I am looking at a case when I have got v and r. Now, in this, you see, there is a term v dot into mu two two. Okay, but here I have j k l can be one two three when is 1 2 3 j is 1 2 3 t then there will be a term u alpha k and this thing this is not 0 this, there will be term that will come out this will be actually become r there will be term equal to r that is this term one term will arise which will be looking like uh, it will it will turn out to be m 1 1 u r an additional term will come m 1 1 u r that means my you see what happened my y at v dot and of course with r all that see the my, my y at v dot and of course I am having v and r this arises to me v dot v dot plus an extra term comes m 1 1 u r because of r. So, this is arising because of added mass inertia forces. So, what I am trying to say the inertia force pulse is well defined, we know it exactly. I do not have to expand this any further to go to any other terms. It is a y v part that is a damping that is not known and damping is the one that it turns out if we plot v versus y, it is where the debate comes. Why? Because number one the, the, the origin of the force if you one looks at that it may arise because of real fluid effect, velocity effect etcetera. In fact, wh why it happen is that if you have a ship here and going like that flow tends to come. So, this acts as a lifting surface number one. So, as a lifting surface it works which can be of course, defined with potential flow theory this is acting as if it is a lifting surface it gives the y, but there is also flow coming this way because you know there is a small v there. 
So, if I look at the cross section, if I look at the cross section here, flow comes this way and so flow will separate out, this may flow will separate out and this will give me some force. So, there can be also a force arising because of real fluid effect. I, I think uh, I understand the physics once again that I have this ship with an angle of attack going like that which means what I have here u and I have here v. What does it mean? There is a flow coming this side small v, but there is also flow coming this side. If you look at this, if I stand here I will appear to me that flow is coming this side. So, it is the body is acting, body is going like that, no, body is going like this, flow is coming this side. So, it will act as a lifting surface of low aspect ratio, whatever that we will discuss afterwards. That is one phenomena which can be of course, defined by means of angle of attack, C L alpha and all that. But there is also a flow coming this side, small v which will try to separate out, give you another force that will be a real fluid force. So, as a result you end up getting two natural forces. So, this need not be like that, this can be actually like this, it can also be like that, we do not know how it is, it can be non-linear variation. So, this is why this part which is connected to lifting phenomena not purely potential phenomena, you have doubt. That is why I have to model it. So, I can model this now y v as y v v plus y v v v square plus y v v v v cube like that. Now, here comes the question, you know if I use this now what is happening normally uh, again I would like to tell you this. You look at this z z curve, how do you model z z against theta? You will see that z z you are modeling a 0 plus a 1 theta plus a 2 theta bar theta etcetera. Maybe I should not have brought that. See the point is here that normally I want to have a some curve. There is no point of going up to very high order. I can keep going up to you know like y v v v v v 4 plus like that. Normally what happen? there is no necessity for us to go to very high order to tell me that this is actually little away from straight line. Because you know even if I suppose I will take another graph here or maybe this only, even if the graph is like this, even if it is higher, I can fit actually even a second order polynomial. After all it is only one curvature, it is not going like that. So, essentially up to this is good enough because this is going to capture me this, if I, I can fit a curve. This is exactly what we keep doing in for example, in your geometry of ship's hull, you use Simpson's rule, because Simpson's rule presumes first rule 1 for 1 that the graph is a second order polynomial, which is not a straight line and second order polynomial is good enough to fit me locally one curvature. So, therefore, I, I basically I want to make sure it is not straight line, but it is like that. I want to model it, so that if I have my v, I will capture this value and not this value by mistake. You must understand this very, very clearly. This is a very fundamental point of the, uh, the nonlinear equation. There serves no purpose to take very large number of terms. All you need is a linear term plus one more term that will tell me the curvature. Now, which one I should take? Should I take this or should I take this or up to? Should I take only this? Now, here is a point. You see here. Suppose a ship is like this, this is my plus v, there is a force here. Now, suppose a ship is this way, minus v, how much is the force? If my value is minus v, okay, my force is supposed to be negative, but if I were to use v v v square, remember even if v is negative, this will give me a positive value. So, you see what is happening here? that my graph is like this and it is supposed to go like that y versus v when I using actually this is not correct minus v I should because y v is negative. So, with or rather I should have put the other way around let it be like that. So, it is like this now. 
So, see if I use y v v plus y v v v square, remember this term become positive or negative, whether v is positive or negative, this becomes positive. So, this will not make me a symmetry. Then what I should do? I should use this as y v v v v, what is called sine corrected quadratic term. That means, this value is going to have positive if v is positive, negative if v is negative. So, I should take therefore, a model of this or to avoid this confusion, I could simply take v v v v cube because this one of course, is same. So, you see that the convention therefore, becomes either you use this or you use this that will capture to me up to this much. But the main point is I want to find out y versus v and this variation which is not a straight line. Why I am telling this, you know, when we I do experiment, what I will do? I will actually measure y against v and I will get this graph. So, because I got the graph, I would I could easily fit a polynomial and find out the way I model, I can find out both this and this or this and this, depending on what I am. If I model by 3, I can find out 3 also. That is why I wanted to talk to this nonlinear equation before I talk about how to determine this. Coefficients. Okay, so this is very important. So we we have a one model. This this is what is known as quadratic model. This is what is known as cubic model. So what happened? Y versus v is normally therefore the two choices. I will tell you then y versus v. Then I may have y v v plus y v v v actually v v is same as v square anyhow we can write it that way or y v v plus y v v v v cube. Now, you take up y versus r n oh sorry sorry y r r plus y r r r r or y r r plus y r r r r cube. Similar to that, n v will happen, uh, you know, like if you are write here n v, then you just have to make it n all places. You know, if I were to make it n v here, then all I have to do is to n v v plus n v v v v etcetera, etcetera. Okay. So, you see, this is one of the model, where of course, I am trying to find out y v versus uh, y, uh, y against v. What about the couple term v and r? Does depend on do y depend on value of r also? What it means is that physically my my y v r. Y depends on both v and r, right? Now this is y v v plus y v v v v. But what about the couple term for v and r that means what about when i have got certain r what is my y v so this is going to become then r v r v this is one model or i can make it in fact again here i have to write this because of the same reason or to avoid that i can write this part another model will be v v r v v r plus y v r r v r r this will take the your sign correction. So, you see I can have either this or this when I want to take v and r. Okay. So, what will happen that I have different models, different way of basically uh, like going. In general of course, in general I, let me write once more again if I were to write y as v and r, then I end up getting keep on going, then y r keep on going, then I have got y v r v r plus uh, y v v r v v r. So, there is no end of it, I can keep on going and of course, if I were to put, I will see that about the delta part, we will come to that later on again. So, I can actually have a whole lot of expression, large expression there. So, when I talk of nonlinear equation, essentially I am looking at this nonlinearity, essentially I am looking at this variation which may be not linear, y or n versus v or r. 
fact that it is not a straight line. Basically, I want to model that. So, I only take up to some term. So, there are, there, if you, you will see against V as I mentioned here, against V, I may take up to this or up to this. Against R, I can take this, but against V and R, I can take only one term R V R V or the two terms like this. This is what is the convention normally, but if you want to take more model, you can also take more, but this is a convention. Now comes the other question of delta. What about uh, delta? See, we are, I have talked of Y, V and R, only V and R, but you will find out that I can also make it more complicated. I will show that this complication uh, after I go to the delta part. You see, for example, uh, now radar, Y at delta, that is Y radar. What we are doing? Delta versus Y force. And now I give the radar. I want to find this Y force, right? This suppose the graph is like that. What is this? This is going to be Y force is going to be again A 1 delta plus A 2 delta square plus etcetera. If C, this would have been D Y by D delta into delta, linear term, but I have 1 by 2 d square y by d delta square into delta square, both like that. Okay. So, therefore, I can model y also delta radar force as y delta delta plus y delta 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 square plus like that. And again the same thing will come delta positive negative, I have to have this quadrant correction. Remember, delta is also like if it is on this side, the force comes this way and if it is on the other side, the force comes this way. So, again here this same thing will come. So, you can model this way or you can model etcetera. That means, y against delta may look like that. Okay. Similar will be for n against delta that is the radar forces, but there are more to it. Remember, I may be putting the radar when I am having certain V. That means, I am going turning like that with a V. So, I have a U here, I have a V here. At that time, I am putting this radar. So, my Y radar force is a function of V as well as R as well as delta, because after all, I am applying the radar in my simulation when I already have some value of non-zero v, non-zero r. So, if I want to expand that, then again this becomes y delta delta plus c y delta 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 square plus, but then I have y v delta v delta plus v and delta terms, then I have r delta r delta plus, then I can have v r delta v r delta plus. So, I can have all kind of terms couple terms so called. That means, what does it mean? It means that this means d y d q y y d v d r d delta means for a non zero v, non zero r, non zero delta what is my force? That small change in that force. So, you know we can end up getting whole lot of such kind of terms. There is no end of these terms and we have actually have to come to certain uh, finite conclusion about how much I should use. There is no end of it from a mathematical sense, but I will try to tell you that there can be some end from physical sense. I will just come to this to just show an example later on with a with a with a y uh, the, the, the delta force for example. Okay. So, this is how it is. Now, let us take talk of a more complex uh, equation. Now, when the ship is turning, we have seen it is healing. We have seen that last time. When the ship turns, it is also having a healing phi. So, now suppose a ship is turning here, 
So, if you say cross section it is healing outward like that. So, when it heals my y force that comes will depend on the angle of heal also. Suppose there is 2 degree healing, okay? there will be some effect of that. So, then y becomes function of v r also phi. So, then I can have this we have seen this v part v v etcetera then I can also have phi phi etcetera then I can have then I have v phi v phi etcetera then I have got r phi r phi etcetera. So, what I am saying you add one more term then you have got all the couple this 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 all the three. So, you know that the, the, the equation therefore can be expanded more and more. So, therefore, what happened I will just write down what is the norm uh, normally is taken, but there is no end of it. So, when we talk of nonlinear equation one of the purpose is you want to make sure that the nonlinear variations are adequately represented not straight line because straight line is not going to give you correct result. It is very similar to trying to find out an area under the ship's curve where you want to use 141 rule because that caters for the curve not a trapezoidal rule because it makes a straight line. Oh, so, it is exactly same as that, but there is no point of using tenth order polynomial to fit for example, uh, you know the area under the bilge. You just use a second order polynomial because that caters for this. So, similar thing is what is being done in nonlinear equations. As I said, I will sum it up again. Uh, the the uh, uh, added mass forces are well defined, so the, you do not have to expand that. The trouble or the ambiguity or the debate arises because of the damping forces. There also one finds out that it is up to quadratic or one level variation is good enough. Then comes the question of couple terms. In the couple terms are always very small. There is no point of going to v, 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 r, r, phi, etcetera, etcetera. You can only go for one couple. Having said that, people have done many experiments to find out what is strong, what is weak, should I take it, should I not take it. In real life, is there a coupling actually of force and come up with certain equations of motion. Some physical ground, L let us look at this x force because I need to now know the x force against rudder angle because when I put the rudder angle delta, remember my x force changes, means rudder gives me resistance. Right, because I put that there is a resistance coming, that is a drag coming on because of rudder. See, the other part of resistance have been taken in the x equation of motion. I will need to put see, see x equation of motion, whatever I had that uh, you know, like m u dot minus, for example, r v uh, minus x g into r square. This was x force, this x hull, this x hull was what was x hull, remember, thrust minus resistance primarily this thrust, then I must have x of rudder, right, because rudder is also going to give me an additional, an additional resistance. Here comes my question, I am talking, I am looking at this x versus rudder. Now, tell me this, x rudder versus delta, how, how shall it look like? You see here, suppose there is a force here, here. So, the force goes like that. What about this minus side? When I give minus delta, what is my rudder force? Is it like this or it is, is it like this? It is like this. Therefore, the graph is u. Now, therefore, here the slope should be actually 0. Now, if this is 0, then can I model this by seeing x r equal to x delta into delta? x delta into delta tells me that the graph is a straight line. Like that, because delta is negative, it becomes this side. So, what happens? See here, I need to model this from physical ground, not this, but x delta 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 square. I do not have a mod also here, just this, because that tells me whether delta is positive or negative, I have x positive. Also, the slope is 0 at this point. So, you see this is a how the physics come in, understanding comes in to know which term you should keep, which term you should keep, which term you should not keep. Similarly, 
one can work out which term should be kept, which term should not be kept, what are the term etcetera, etcetera and end up getting the expression. Now, the general expression for example, for a 4 degree, now normally we have talked only you know like for trajectory simulation, I talked about only y and n, this is important y and n that is sway and yaw is important only from the point of view of initial stability type, initial uh, directional stability. But if I want a trajectory simulation, remember I also slow down as I turn, I did not mention that, but I will slow down obviously when I am turning here, ship is going like that, going like that, going like that, drag is much more on that. Even if I take it as lifting surface, the ship's lifting surface flow comes like that, lift is here, but it is also force this side and force will, this will slow down. So, if I want an actual trajectory during turn, in fact the ship can slow down by 20, 30, 40 percent of speed depending on the uh, speed at which it is going. So, I also need x equation, then sometime I also need k equation because it is also rolling during turn, even zigzag time it will be rolling, uh, healing rather than rolling. So, this is for roll. So, you know that more modern trajectory simulation type of equation will consider all the 4 degree of freedom. You may consider 3, but 2 is only meant for stability studies, small amplitude studies. When you turn and all x has to be there because it slows down, speed will come down. So, then what happen? I have to then expand this forces, hull forces to a very long term and that I am going to just write down and all of them, remember functions they are, they are v r, I am not taking a v dot r dot, but I told you that the added masses are fully known, v r and delta and phi connected to the 4. See v r delta phi and then remember here I have hull forces plus rudder forces, this, this forces are all hull plus rudder, because when I am obviously doing this maneuvers, I have to apply rudder. So, this expansion, a typical ex example I will give you is, uh, in fact, there, there is also supposed to be u there, because I am taking surge. Since I am taking surge, I have got u, v, r, phi and delta, all of them are there. So, you can imagine now if I expand them how big it becomes, but typically what would happen is that x would become, I will just write down uh, one typical part the way it is written, x 0. There is always a mean setup uh, value that is taken, then x delta delta plus x. Now, this model is known as combined quadratic cubic model, where both the terms are retained. Actually, there is a choice whether I can only take this much of the mod, of course, in this case mod does not arise for x delta part, then I have got x u u plus, uh, let me write it here, then plus only one term is taken v and r here x phi phi plus x phi 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 square plus see here what it you, have, you will see I mean similar thing will with happen with y normally normally that is the expansion used for delta you have gone up to cube for u gone up to cube for v gone up to cube for uh, r gone up to cube, for v r only v r, phi up to cube, but when it comes to y for example, I will just give the y part and then we will stop it here, uh, then y normally y, y, one y is there, then there is a delta of course, delta will of course go up to cubic.
actually here maybe I should I should continue in the next page I will just continue from here looking at this because otherwise these things will it just becomes longer and longer. But uh, uh, see now why I want to do that see P, P actually is another one that is introduced that is roll motion, roll velocity. See phi was roll angle but since it is I am assuming is rolling and rolling can be also time dependent as a turning because you know as it goes there see as it zigzags it roll is not fixed you know it is something here so it is time dependent. If phi depends on time d phi by dt is P. So, you have also this P terms coming. Then comes, I will just continue this. Uh, well, actually, normally this is not taken, just up to one uh, uh, probably model seat, then I have a phi. Now, here. Now comes the question of this couple terms. Now this this couple normally it is taken as in this case. Let me see v phi phi v phi square plus y v v phi v square phi plus y here uh, r phi phi r phi square plus y r r phi r square phi. I have not made this V V R. See here, what I am trying to say, if you look carefully, I have Y against delta. Actually, delta, uh, let me see other, uh, no, they, we have not taken here. See, Y against delta, Y against V, Y against R y against v r combination v v r v square r v r r v r square this two has been taken. Some people will replace this line by simply y v r v r this one 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 term some time. Then I have got term with respect to p I have got with respect to roll motion phi then I have got v and phi r and phi. So, my point is that you can write like that whole lot of expansion people write that, but most important terms that are retained here and I will show that in this case normally you can go up to this much. This is also very small because what is happening why I now let us look at this physics of that. What is y delta? It is a rather angle uh, Okay, we will get back to this uh, I will have to I will get back to this uh, part. Let us look at y delta there is a rudder here. What is a rudder? Rudder is a hydro foil surface. Flow comes this side with the rudder angle is delta. Now, you have done this, all of you have done this. This y force is proportional to C L lift or rather lift. Lift force is in a sense very close to this thing. Tell me how does lift versus alpha Harry. Mostly you would have done that that it becomes a straight line and then there is a stall lift against alpha for a lifting surface. How, how does it vary? So, it is L versus alpha like the straight line. So, therefore, mostly for actual surface up to the angle that you use lift is actually a straight line. Therefore, up to y delta itself is adequate, up to y delta is adequate, not necessary to have, but sometime if you want to go up to very large angle, you may use y delta delta, but there is no point of going beyond. It is seen from experiment that y versus v has a large variation. So, normally one retains this line. This line normally there is no need to retain this because normally this is good enough. It is found out that variation against r is not much it is more or less straight line against r. r also is not very high for a ship, r is a rate of turn. You are not turning at a very high rate like 90 degree per second or something, but only torpedoes and all may turn. P is maybe neglected in a two dimensional model because we are not taking P. 
then comes phi. Most cases of usual day to day study phi can be neglected or you can take only up to this much if at all you want to take roll. This one either you this you can neglect V phi very small coupling because if I do not take phi there is no question of V versus phi. This one you take this this no this one also you neglect sorry this one this one you take this or this. So, what happen you take V variation up to quadratic R variation basically I will just sum and then end here because we, we are running out of time. So, V variation etcetera. In fact, next class I will pick up from this point again uh, because we are running out of time. Like that if you do, you will end up getting what is known as a more or less conventional nonlinear equation. Once again, I, I want to tell you before I end, what I today mention is a concept of nonlinearity. Essentially, it comes down to be the fact that the forces can be nonlinear for etcetera. So, I need to adequately represent them. How much is adequate? Nobody seems to know. Okay. So, you can have if you want, you can take 1000 terms, nobody stops you, but should we take? It does not make sense. Physically, we see and find out that many of them are actually straight line. So, physically, what happened uh, from experiment and all, we find out some of them have a nonlinear variation, some of them do not have. So, you take only up to that point and you end up getting what is known as a working model. There is no fixed model, Americans use one model, Europeans use another model, we may use another model but all of them have some similarity. So, I will discuss this final model at least one or two forms in next class. So, we will know this uh, uh, nonlinear coefficients. Then we will talk about experimentally determining this all this coefficient because when you do experiment you do not do only for linear. When you do experiment you end up uh, doing linear and nonlinear. This is the reason why I wanted to introduce the nonlinear coefficients before I talked about experiment. So, with that I will end today's class. And next class we will pick up beginning talk about this equation and then go for the um, you know like experimental determination. Thank you.